Hi guys, this is Karthik and welcome back to the, another video from my channel. So this particular video will be based on a general purpose segmentary library that I wrote in my free time. So this library was initially aimed for uh, personal use which I'll be using to solve coding contest problems. But I think it's a good library and I can share it with you guys so that even you can use it for coding contests. So what happens when there is a problem that uses segmentary? Many of us are able to think, okay, I might be needing range minimum queries or I might be needing a particular kind of maybe range ZOR queries or a product queries kind of thing. But the problem is that writing an entire segmentary code in limited time is a bit of a hard task, right? Because first of all, you need to know how to write a segmentary, then you have to vary it for your purpose. So what I did was I wrote a general purpose segmentary library, which could be used to solve a wide range of problems. In my opinion, it can solve almost all the problems that use point updates and queries. And all you have to do is you have to say, okay, my segmentary dot query and give it a range L comma R. It will give you the answer. You have to say my segmentary comma update and you have to give the new value and you have to tell what index to update and it will do it for you and it will solve a wide range of problems all you have to do is you have to provide a little bit information about the data and the type of queries that you're going to perform it's basically sim something similar to standard template libraries how vectors and stuff work so let me show you the code i'm not going to go through in detail how this thing works this is for me i did i wrote it i have written comments also if you'd like to maybe figure it out for your own or if you want, I might make a video later on how this actually works underneath. For now, I'll be explaining how you can actually use it and apply it, apply it to a wide range of problems. I'll give you a few examples so that you can have some interest in this particular library. Otherwise, you might feel that it's not very useful. But I feel that many contest problems will be easily soluble through this library. So you can use it for range minimum queries. You can use it, use it for range sum queries. You could reuse it for range product queries. You can even use it to solve Spot GSS one, Spot KGSS, and these are really good segmentary problems. GS, uh, G triple S, GSS one, and KGSS. You can try these problems on your own, and I've solved them using simply this library. All I did was write five lines and tell my library what to do. It did the work. So that was quite easy for me to do, right? So I'll be showing you how to use this particular library now. So I have this particular library. All I have to do is I have to create a segment tree. And how do I create a segment tree? I call the segment trees constructor. To the constructor, I can pass a vector of type T. Now, whenever you have a segment tree, you build it over an, over an array. This array could be integer type. This array could be long, long type. This array could be user defined type right Imp an array of employees or anything so basically your segmentary nodes are of a particular type t that you have to specify i want my segment trees every node to hold the information this or that so you can either define a structure if it is very less information you can say okay my segmentary each node should hold an int my segmentary each node should hold a double a int and an entire set of values so it could be anything all you have to do is pass that thing here it will accept any value t the information one node of the segmentary holds and data this data represents the lowermost region of the array and segmentary will build over this array how it builds is none of your concern it will do that behind the scenes one more value has to be provided that i'll talk about later and this combine function is basically you will tell the segmentary what to do given two child nodes how does the segmentary produce the value of the parent node so basically if i know the answers for the left child the answer for the right child the parent must be able to derive its answer using the answer of left child and right child and you need to tell how the parent will be combining the answers of the child nodes the left and the right child segmentary is a binary tree so each node has two child nodes or the node is a leaf node so if it is not a leaf node you need to tell how can it use the answer of left and right child to combine the answers and produce the answer for itself finally you need to give a value if one of the nodes uh, let's say combine so i said combine left child right child produces the answer of parent 
so you need to give a value identity value i would call it so that combine of something comma value equals to something so basically combine of x comma value will be equal to x and identity value you need to provide and with examples that would be more clear so let's say i have this particular segment tree i want to solve range sum queries i have this vector on which i want to do range sum queries i will say okay each node of my segment tree holds an integer i pass that thing here i name my segment tree my segment tree i give the vector v i tell okay build the segment tree over this vector okay secondly i give an identity value so combine of value comma zero will be value so I, I am providing this particular function how to combine the left and right child answers to produce parent answer simply since it's range some queries so if this child represents a particular range this child represents some other range then the parent would represent the entire range and sum would simply be x plus y if the answer for left child is x and right child is y then sum would simply be x plus y so i simply to write this simple function i say okay my segment tree v comma zero comma sum because uh, this is the identity value here for some queries sum of x comma zero would be x and sum of zero comma x would be again x so i provide an identity value and this works now i can say my segment tree dot query one comma two it should give me five let me show you it actually does it gave me a five and let's uh, do a little bit variation let me do an update so i say okay my segment tree dot update uh, and let's say that i update the uh, okay why is my compiler not giving me suggestions that's not good so it's uh, what's the name of the function yeah here it is update index and value so i say okay update index uh, index 3 and set it to value 0 okay so now let me query the entire range 0 to 3 it should give me 1 plus 2 plus 3 that is 6 oh yeah it gave me 56 because i need to say e and dl here okay so it gives me 6 so you can see that the segment tree worked for range sum queries what if i wanted range minimum queries simply change this function here let me make it min and what i can do here is simply pass this function min yeah identity value will be different minimum of x comma something so that x comma identity element should be x so i would like to keep it some very large value so that x is always smaller so int max could be a good option okay so i faced some problem i don't know what is that my segment tree dot query one comma two should have worked int max here maybe let me change this name maybe, maybe this will work i guess i should not keep same names it worked so you can see that in the range 1 to 2 the smaller value was 2 and i got the output and finally in the entire range after updating the last element to 0 the smallest element in this range would be 0 and i got that output so it worked for range minimum queries as well if i wanted range zor queries i would say zor and i would say x zor y i want range and queries it would work for that as well so you see that it's quite a good thing and very easy to use in fact right so for easy things we are done and i've also shown some examples there range some queries range product queries here you can see that the identity element for product product is one i've shown how you can solve harder problems using this tree library so probably solving spot gss1 look up the problem it's a very good problem so for solving spot gss1 what I did was I made a structure node here and this is the information each and every node of my segmentary holds. I know I wrote a combine function how to combine the left and right values uh, the left and right child nodes for a particular node to produce the answer of the parent right. So I just wrote these two things and I was good to go.
my problem was solved all i uh, did was write these two things and i solved a segmentary problem so you can see this it's a very good library the updates work in login time the build works in on time what else could you ask for so you can go to github give a star to my uh, repository if you like it you can use it in coding contests hopefully many of you will find it helpful please make sure that you like share and subscribe the content thanks for watching guys let me know if you would like me to elaborate um, anything uh, in this library or you would like me to try out and solve some segmentary problem using this particular library i would be more than happy to try it out i'm not sure whether i'll be able to solve it but i will definitely try it so thank you for watching guys